In HMath, you're probably never going to be asked a question like, find the derivative of this function. You're going to be asked questions like, find the stationary points, determine their nature, find the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing, find your inflection points, your concavity, that kind of stuff. Now, you're probably not going to be asked this many things in one question. I mean, you could be, so be prepared. Um, but you will probably find two of these in one question, um, and this, these types of questions may appear multiple times on your exam, so you have to really understand how to do each of these, okay? Um, so these two will require the first derivative, and these two will require the second derivative, uh, and I'll explain why. So first, for your stationary points, you have to understand what a stationary point is, okay? And that's where your derivative, so we'll say your f prime, oh man, <laughs> that's where your f prime, prime, is equal to zero. So your derivative is just zero. It's stationary. Your slope is like that. Uh, zero slope, okay? And to determine their nature, you have to figure out whether it's a minimum point on the graph or a maximum point, okay? So a minimum occurs when your point is down there, and a maximum occurs where your point is down there. So a minimum and a maximum. And that makes sense. And they're, they're, they're local, okay? Local minimum and local maximum. Um, that just tells you Okay, like it's, it's a minimum point. It's the lowest point in a, in a certain area. Okay, so let's just find that. So first we have to find our derivative, which is simply just f prime of x. You, need, you know how to do this. If you don't, then uh, I have videos that you can watch. I'll probably link them uh, in the description if I, if I, if I don't forget. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's our derivative. And we are going to set that equal to zero. So now we can solve, okay? Uh, we can factor out a 10x cubed from this, and then we're left with an x minus, uh, not 3, we're left with an x minus 4, okay? And that's all equal to 0. So now what we do is we just set both of these terms equal to 0. We have this 10x cubed equal to 0, and then it's x minus 4 equal to 0. And pretty easily you can find that this is 0 by dividing by 10, and then cube rooting, that's just going to give you zero. And then this is just add four to both sides, and we get x equals four. So now what we do is we plug these into the original, not the derivative, into the original. Because the derivative tells you the slope. This is the function of the slope of this function. This is your original function. So if you want to find a point that's on your graph, you need to find a point from the original um, equation. It, it makes sense if you really think about it. So plugging this in, you got a zero there, zero there, pretty easily you'll find that you have a zero, zero. You can double check if you want. Uh, here, there's a lot of math involved, negative 512. And on the ACE exam, I believe you can use a calculator, so you can just plug it in. Not that big of a deal. So these are your two points. Now to determine their nature, actually, yeah, so these are your stationary points. I'll put SP. So comma there. Um, and so to, to determine their nature, you have to find if it's a minimum or a maximum. Easiest way you can do that is by plugging in points, or you can just use a sign chart. So this is what a sign chart is. So you have your 0 and your 4, your x values, all of your x values here. You might have 1, you might have 2, you could have 3 or more. Uh, it just depends on the problem, OK? So now I'd say the easiest thing to do is plugging in a 1. So 2 times 1 to the 5th, that's just 1. So that's 2 minus 10 to the 1 to the 4th, so that's a negative number. You don't need to know if it's the exact value, you just need to know if it's positive or negative. And from here, you can work out the, uh, with the multiplicities. Again, you could, if you want, plug in, num plug in numbers, but it gets kind of weird with like 5. Plugging 5 into that is going to give you huge numbers. You don't want to do that. So you can focus on the multiplicities. So what that means is if I have a function, let's say x squared, oh man, my marker here, all right, x squared, that has a multiplicity of 2 because, I mean, it's the exponent. The exponent is pretty much the multiplicity. If I have x minus 3 cubed, that has a multiplicity of 3, okay? And you can assume like anything else from that. Um, and so whenever you have an even multiplicity, like 2, 4, 6, etc., uh, your, your graph is going to look kind of like this, like a, like a parabola. 
um, kind of like your x squared graph. But if you have a multiplicity of three, you're going to have like a snake, okay? And it's going to go from positive to negative. You can think of y equals x as a straight line. Uh, that just that has a multiplicity of one, so it follows the same pattern. It doesn't look like a snake, but it it does follow the same pattern of going left to right, uh, up to uh, yeah yeah up to down down to up. Uh, I can speak. Uh, and so then basically, uh, you just figure that out here. So where did this zero come from? That came from this ten x cubed. So um, what's going to happen is since this has a multiplicity of three, then you know that it's going to be one of these snake graphs and you're going to go from positive to negative or negative to positive you're just going to switch the sign because a negative negative x cubed graph would look like this well would look like that so you're going to switch your sign here um your multiplicity is again one x minus four to the first power so you're going to switch your sign again if this was x minus four squared you would keep a negative um I can make another video on multiplicity if that doesn't make sense, but uh, that's pretty much a general idea. Or if, again, that's confusing, you can just um, plug in numbers. You can use your calculator, so it's not that hard. Uh, but this is a quicker trick that if you understand, it'll be easier for you. Okay, so what does this mean? Uh, this means that uh, you're increasing here and here. So the variables where you're increasing are between negative infinity, because you go negative infinity over here, and have your positive infinity over here. So negative infinity to zero, and uh, four to infinity. And where you're decreasing, uh, you have zero to four. Okay, so this is your i and your d. Now, I skipped over the determine the nature, and this is why. So you see how your graph it has a positive slope. So you're so let let's let's draw out the graph. So here we have zero and four. So you have a positive slope up until zero, and then your slope becomes negative, and then your slope becomes positive again. So you have a maximum here and a minimum here. So this point is a max, and this point is a min, minimum. Um, and see, so that's your nature. Uh, and of course, it doesn't look exactly like that. It's going to look more like this, but that's the general idea. So that's everything using the first derivative. So we have these two points completed. So we found our first derivative, which is there. And to find the second derivative, all we have to do is find the derivative of our derivative, which is going to give us 40x cubed minus 120x squared, okay? And again, we're going to set that equal to zero to find our inflection points and concavity. So we can factor out a 40x squared from both of these. It's going to give us an x minus 3 equal to zero. Uh, and then we have 40x squared equals zero. And then we have x minus 3 equals zero, okay? So now we can just solve these again, same thing, x equals zero, and then x equals positive three. So what can we do with these? So these aren't necessarily our inflection points. These are just where the points where our, like where we're gonna base our concavity around. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So to find our concavity, we just use our sign chart again. We go here we have zero and three and we plug in points around. So I'm gonna use one again, because one is pretty easy to plug in. Uh, and again, we're gonna use this, not our second derivative. So, um, so we get a negative number again if we put in one. Um, here, this has a multiplicity of two, which is even, meaning we're gonna keep the sign. So like if we were, basically what it means is, if we were negative on this side, we're gonna keep being negative. So that's what it means. That's like a negative x squared graph right there. Um, but here we have a, a positive multiplicity, or I'm sorry, an odd multiplicity. So we're going to switch our signs to a positive number. Okay. Our, 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 um, our slope is negative, or it's not our slope really. It's, so it's negative here, negative here, and positive. 
So that means if it's negative, we're concave down, meaning our graph looks like this. So that this is concave down and concave up looks like that. So we are, we're not concave down between this entire interval. We have to separate these two. So I'm going to say concave, oops, concave down is from negative infinity to zero as well as zero to three. I'm not going to combine them because they're around this point. Um, and you can put a little u here. Some people put a u. Uh, you don't have to though. Well, for ace, you don't really have to. Uh, and then concave up, it's where it's positive, which is positive three to infinity. Okay, and that's that's our concavity. Now to find our inflection points, that's where our, our signs change from negative to positive or positive to negative. And it doesn't happen here, not here, because we go from negative to negative, but it happens here where we go from negative to positive. So this is our point. And if we want to plug it in, um, it's, it's a big number. If my calculations are correct, I believe it's positive 3, negative 324 is our only inflection point. 0, 0, as I said, is not going to be our inflection point. Uh, it's just, it's just a point. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much the entire thing. We covered all of this and yeah, it, it didn't actually take us that long. It's probably one of it's probably a longer question than what you'll find on the ACE exams, but be prepared for whatever questions come at you. In this episode of ACE Math Review, we will discuss tangent and normal lines, and we're going to find the tangent and normal line uh, at t equals 4 of these parametric equations. So before we get into what a tangent line is, I want to or like how to find it, I want to discuss what it actually is. So let's say I have this function, like that. And I want to find the tangent of the normal lines at this point. So the tangent line will touch that one point once, like just imagine it's smaller, I just wanted to make it clear where it is. Um, it touches it once and it matches the same slope. So it would be a straight line starting like here and going here as well. So yeah, it's kind of, yeah, whatever. Uh, so it goes kind of like that. And then the normal line would be perpendicular to that, so it'd be like that. Okay, I guess it also becomes the tangent line here, so that's cool, but it's not always the case like that. So pretty much that, that's what tangent normal lines are, and you can write them in, in the form of point slope, and which is provided there, where m is, denotes our slope, which would in this case be the derivative, since you know we're not using straight lines, we're using curvy lines and all that, so yeah, let's figure this out. So first we're going to find the derivative of our x function, which is just negative 10t. It's not really that difficult. Uh, it's just a standard derivative there. Uh, and then here, our y function, you can think of this as 4t to the 1 half power. And so you can change this into... Um, 1 half times 4, which is 2, t to the negative, yeah, negative 1 half power, okay, and then you're going to divide, you're going to divide dy dt divided by uh, dx dt, that's an inverse multiplication, and that's going to give you dy dx, so we're going to do 2, uh, basically just 2 over uh, t to the 1 half times uh, 1 over negative 10t. Okay, so we don't actually have to simplify, we can kind of just plug it in because we have t equals 4, and we're just going to find whatever this is. So this is going to be, so 4 to the 1 half is just 2, so it's 2 over 2 times 1 over negative, uh, negative 10 times 4, which is negative 40. This is just 1, so this just becomes negative 1 over 40. Okay, so that's our slope. That that's it. That that's that's our n, I guess your n. Uh, so then we just plug it in. So actually, we need one more thing. We have our t. We just have to find whatever our x coordinate and our y coordinate are because we're doing this in the x y plane. T is not involved. So pretty simple. So x of four 
and y of 4 are going to be negative 5 times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, so this is going to be negative 80. And uh, squared of t, squared of 4 is 2. I guess plus or minus 2, but don't worry about that. Uh, so square, square root of 4 is 2 times 4 is 8. So these are our coordinates. We have uh, the point 8, negative 80. And so now we have everything we have. So this is y, okay, um, minus our negative, which is going to be y plus 80, is equal to negative 1 over 40 times x minus 8. And that's our tangent line. I'll just do a t right there. What's our normal line going to be? It's going to be the same thing, except this is going to be an opposite reciprocal. So our negative sign is going to switch, and uh, we're going to make this 40 over 1. So pretty much the same. y plus 80 is equal to 40, positive 40, times x minus 8. And so the reason why we do that is because it's perpendicular, and that's how it works. Um, if you need more help, then there's probably stuff on YouTube for that. Uh, or I can make a video on that eventually. But yeah, these are our tangent normal lines. And that's pretty much it. So pretty pretty simple. Um, they could ask you questions about these. I don't think they really will. It's just a line. So yeah, but that's pretty much as hard as it'll get. Uh, the easiest it would get would probably be just they give you a function in terms of y equals something and then it's a lot easier because you don't have to deal with the parametrics but yeah another important fact though another important application of derivatives is optimization where you're trying to find the maximum or the minimum of something uh, in this case we have i don't know a fence around a garden and we're trying to find the maximum area given we have 50 meters of perimeter of fencing, let's say. So we have 50 meters of fencing, and we want to find the dimensions, x and y, where we have the maximum area, okay? So think of a maximum as simply just the maximum on a graph. That's it. So we're, we're trying to find basically that point on our function, or on our area function, which would be, which would be like a of x or something. So let's think uh, a of x, What's our area going to be? It's just going to be x times y. But this y is kind of weird here because it's an a of x function. What's the y doing there? So we need to find y in terms of x. Another thing we know is that the perimeter is equal to um, 50. But it's also equal to x plus 2y, and notice how there's a wall up here, so we only have three sides of fencing. I forgot to mention that, but that's that's important to understand. So this is equal to 50 equals x plus 2y. So 50 equals x plus 2y, then uh, we can actually, it, it, it would actually be easier to find this in terms of y, so our a of y, um, because we can subtract 2y from both sides, this is 50, minus 2y is equal to x. And so now we can just plug this, this 50 minus 2y in. And so we have a, oops, we have a of y, a of y is equal to, uh, I'll put the y in front, y times 50 minus 2y. We can actually distribute here, this is 50y minus 2y squared. Okay, and now if we want to find the derivative all they have to do is just take the derivative. It's a pretty easy derivative, it's just 50 minus 4y. And so what we do now is think about your, your uh, stationary points and how if we want to find the, the con uh, not, not concavity, it's the uh, local and min uh, local and local minimum and maximums. Uh, basically, you just set this equal to zero. It's pretty easy. Uh, and then you get 50 equals 4y, divide both sides by 4, and you get, uh, wait, yeah, 12.5 equals y, okay? And, yeah, so your dimensions, oh, actually, we're not done yet, because this is just this dimension. If you want to find your x, 
All you have to do is plug it into here. So x is equal to 50 minus 2 times 12.5 is going to be 25. And it's going to be 25. So your dimensions are going to be 25 plus 12.5 plus 12.5. And that adds up to 50. And so basically you can say your dimensions are going to be 25 by 12.5. And that is your optimum area, basically. So yeah, or you could you could have done it in terms of x. Uh, you'd have to like here it would make it a little a little more complicated, but yeah, that's pretty much as easy it'll get as as easy as it will get. So let's let's actually go into a little harder problem, not that much harder, but a little bit better. So in this next example, we are taking a sheet of paper that's a square, side length twenty four. And we are folding two, like two x lengths on it. So here, basically, it looks like this, where we have this is our normal sheet of paper, flat, flattened. Uh, it's twenty four, and then if we just fold the two sides, this is length x up here, and then down here, it's going to be twenty four minus two x, since we have these two x's folded there, and so. Um, Basically, if we want to set up a volume equation, we have v of x is equal to uh, 24 minus 2x as our length, and then our width is, again, 24 minus 2x since it's a square, and our height is just x. And we want to find the maximum volume uh, that we can possibly have with this. Okay, so we could take the derivative of this, but it's going to be very messy, so let's just simplify it first so that it's in terms of one equation. It's going to be a little messy to solve, but basically, I'm going to put this x in the front. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to put the x in the front here. Can I, can I write? Can I, can I, there we go. x times 24 times 24 is 576. Did not think of, or I just know that, yeah, totally. <laughs> um, minus uh, 96x plus 4x squared. Um, okay, so this is going to be, um, I'm going to reorder this. This is 4x cubed because I have to multiply the x to all of the terms. Minus 96x squared plus 576x. So now we take the derivative. So v prime of x is just going to be 12x squared minus uh, 192x plus 576. Okay, so now I can factor out a 12. So again, we're setting this equal to zero because we're finding the maximum. So I had to cut a little there to figure this out, but uh, this is just going to equal 12. Why is my marker dying on me here? All right, 12 times x squared minus 16x plus uh, 48, yep, okay? And then we will factor that out to be x minus 12, yeah, times x minus 4. So then from here you get the x values, x equals 12 and x equals 4. And this isn't done yet because you have to plug it into this equation since you just found your x value. So you need to now plug it into this. So uh, this 24 minus 2 times 24 is 0. 0 times 0 times 4, it's going to give you 0. So this doesn't actually make any sense. This is probably your x. So let's just double check. So 24 minus 2 times 4, 2 times 4 is 8. So it's going to be 16 times 16 times 4. So let's just do a quick little multiplication here. So 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 is there. Okay, so then we get this 16. So 6, 5, 2. So 256 times 4 is going to give you, I guess 250 is 1,000. Yeah, so 1024 units squared, whatever your units are, if it's like inches or meters or kilometers, whatever it is, but I guess a sheet of paper would be like inches. So 1024 inches squared. So yeah, 
that's the answer to the question and that's pretty much the optimization questions you're going to get um they'll be in the form of word problems i just kind of broke it down into visual pictures but you should always draw a picture on these and yeah make sure you understand what you're doing so yeah uh, again this should be zero so yeah